So I wanted to go into how I create the uh, stunt runner rooms in case it might help any other developers out there that uh, ha you know run into the same problems and need something similar to what I'm doing. All right. So I have a spawn tool here, which basically reads from like say these um, no not those uh, where are they like these. Uh, prefab folders right here. Power-ups, triggers, you know, enemies, that sort of thing. And it reads in and I, you know, use this auto-create spawners thing. Um, so you see something like original objects, you know, these are the original objects that's read into this array. Object spawners, you know, that's, uh, that's all automated. And here are the paths for auto-creating the spawners. So I just feed it these different uh, folder paths so I can easily just add another path or whatever. Uh, no big deal. So let's say I wanted to make a room. Uh, well, I already have some completed rooms here. So what I would do is instead of you know digging through this all my massive hierarchy of folders and dragging and dropping everything I want into um, the scene, which causes other problems too. Like let's say um, I have these two prefabs here. Uh, well, if I just drag this one and I say I save this out as a prefab, and I make a change to this, the original prefab for this. Uh, well, that change will not be propagated to uh, be to this prefab because it's nested. So nested prefabs are a problem, right? So what I would do after you know adding all these pieces and stuff in and positioning them to sort of make my room, um, I would convert them to spawners. And the reason I would use this two spawners button. So let me drag in something like uh, Birdwing Blast. Um, turn it on and you'll see nothing appears in the view. That's because all of these are spawners. So spawners for the different platforms, the spikes, the power-ups, all that stuff, um, which solves a couple problems. It allows me to, obviously all this stuff is nested and there's not gonna be a problem uh, since I'm spawning from the original object. Uh, any changes I make to the original object will be propagated uh, no matter what because it's spawning it. This also lets me use pooling so that I'm using a spawn pool for each of these different things, which is really good for memory. All right, so let me go back to here and say, say that's all great, but you know, I wanna change something about the room. All I have to do is click to originals. Um, you know, it goes through and replaces each of these spawners with what the actual original item is. So let's say then I was like, ah, oh, well, I want this cannon here. <laughs> for some reason, um, <clears throat> you know, go to spawners, and then I would just click apply, and that would save that back out to the prefab, and just to prove that, you know, that would actually work, uh, I can round trip it, go back to originals, and you can see, uh, you know, this has been moved. So, you know, not you know, an elegant, beautiful solution, but it gets the job done a whole lot more efficiently than, <laughs> you know, th how I was doing it. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.